everyone, George here, and welcome back to my implementation of Five Nights at Freddy's inside the Unity engine, using programs like Maya LT and so forth to uh, generate all the content from start to finish. God, what are we in now? We've hit, what is this, video 72, I believe now, of the FNAF series, and when I started this, yep, so you can see I have all these different videos scheduled. You'll be seeing this in the future, but I do try to schedule content in advance. I never really thought we'd get this far into this series. I thought this was going to be a hell of a lot shorter. Let's continue with it, because literally you are seeing every step of how I implement this process. So hopefully some of you find it interesting. Picking up from last time, I've opened up some reference material. So we're working on my version of a Foxy character. I have, of course, opened a Fox. We have opened the latest version of Foxy, at least an image of it that I found online for the, the sister version. And of course we have uh, from FNAF 2, uh, the slightly more discombobulated Foxy. And then from the original FNAF, this particular image here. My intent, oh, and there's of course from FNAF 4, him coming out of the closet. The idea is we've got all these different variations of Foxy that I'm looking at, just trying to get a general sense of what the character is about. We're going to follow that, but remember, I'm putting my own twist on it, so expect, expect different things. Okay, so we can already see a lot of the pugs still within this form, this model. So we're going to need to start adjusting things. One thing is the fact that the top of the head is way too high up. The ears probably should get bigger. I'm thinking a little bit more fox, fennec fox. Oh, that might oh, that might have been a tiny bit too big after all. And I'm going to bring them down a bit and sink them in because we're going to bring the whole head down as well. Let's hit two on my keyboard. And actually, let's just go to... No, two's good. We're going to stay with two mode so I get an idea of what these polys are doing while I'm in subdivision surface mode or approximation of it, I'm going to just start grabbing edge loops and kind of moving things around, uh, changing the general shape of what this should look like. We have this giant open hole here, and that's obviously going to have to disappear in some way. So I'm probably going to end up connecting these two elements there and there. So let's go into uh, one mode, just poly mode, and try to see what I can connect. So we can grab these elements here, pull, I think I grabbed too much, so let's undo that, there we are. Let's pull this back, and I'm wondering if I can bridge these two elements. So if we go to two mode, yeah, let's try that. So I'm gonna bring this up and in, and the same thing down here with that bit, and you as well, thank you, and kind of down. I just wanna get an edge that's a little bit more in line with this one right here. We'll of course push these elements back in camera space a bit, and you I'm worried about, so let's do something with you. I'm thinking up and in. Okay, I can, I can go with that. Good. All right, so let's just see what happens if we do a simple bridge between these two pieces. So U to U and right click, uh, Shift, Bridge Faces, and there we are. So that's not too terribly messy. Let's go to three key. And there we've already kind of uh, bridged that element there. So that works. Going back to two mode, let's just start grabbing some faces actually. I'm gonna grab this face and I just kind of want to seal this thing off a bit. Although I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm gonna to wanna to try some new things, things that I've never done before, and see what exactly happens. So I have the wrong edge there. That's the edge I want. I'm gonna bring that one up a bit, and this edge needs to come out now. And yeah, we're gonna to need to tweak this obviously a lot more, but we're getting somewhere. Okay, now verts, you need to be pushed back. This eyebrow doesn't really register with anything going on with Foxy regardless of the game. Uh, he's got these little eyebrows attached to the top of his head. In this version, it's become far more animatronic-esque. We still have those those eyebrows there and there, although the segmentation has happened a lot all over the face, which I like. I, I, I really do like the segmented nature of the later versions. So this eyelash, eyebrow type area, I think we are gonna follow this one a little bit more. I'm gonna round out the details, grab this back edge and rotate it into itself. So coming in here, and you as well, I think. Grabbing all... Okay, this is going to be messy for two seconds while I do this, so just bear with me. So I'm going to go to rotate mode now, and then we're just going to give this a shot. So somewhere up and down like that. Now we're going to go over here, grab all those back elements. First, grab them. We're going to have to rotate them, but first we're going to pull this down. And then let's rotate these elements somewhere like that. Okay, so now we've got that more rounded uh, view of what this should be. But I'm not perfect, and I didn't expect it to be, so let's just kind of start fixing some of these things. You, sir, are way too far out, so I'm thinking you need to go in. Let's go to one mode so I get an idea of what's going on. I was wrong there. This vertex needs to come out. 
There we are. That's getting a little bit better, I'd say. And, and you as well need to come out. There we are. Perfect. And uh, down. All right. Better. Not perfect, but better. Okay, so now we definitely have much more of a, a Foxy-esque eye. Uh, the top of this is way too large, though. I don't need all that space. So let's go into edge mode, grab the whole thing, and just start scaling things down a bit. The axis doesn't really matter. I just need to simplify things. Vertex mode, wrong element. So let's F8 and grab the right one and then go to vertex mode and then just do a blind selection somewhere around there and then do a deselect and hope I got everything. Yep. Okay, now I'm going to skew that way down. I want it to come together uh, and somewhere down in here. And we're going to do the same thing for you there. And I'm going to pull you down a bit as well. And yeah, let's just keep tweaking until we get something I like. Okay, there we are. I'm almost wondering if I should make him a little mean in this. I'm just going to keep wrapping this whole thing around a bit. Let's go to edge mode and just sort of rotate that and bring it in. I'm not liking the curves that we've got going on here. And I almost feel like this one now, if we put a DV down there and now we do a scale up from the bottom and make that a little bit more pronounced, we can get a little anger out of him. D and V down here again and then in. Yeah, better, not perfect. DV down here and then Whoops, looks like I have the wrong spot. DV down there, maybe. There we are. Now let's try scaling. There we go. Yeah. Now I almost want to duplicate this and make a second segment that goes above it. Uh, or take just this back half and stick another segment in here. Um, as if this is a separate element that will be doing its own sort of emoting. And then there will be another one. Um, might be getting a little bit too far ahead though. We do need to address, uh, it's far, far reduced apparently in this version of the game, but we do need to address Foxy's side clefts of hair right there and there. Since that's such an iconic piece of his face, I think I'm gonna go with that and continue. We had segmented out this bit and then put it off over here with the idea that I would then bridge these elements. And in doing so, I would have an area that the face or the uh, hair would be coming out of. So let's continue with me thinking that's the right thing to do and grab these elements. I am gonna go to two key. And just at the start, I'm gonna pull this out a little bit to see what we have. Shift, right click, not that. There we go. Shift, right click, extrude. And now this is <clears throat> getting better, but not perfect. Let's go to world chords and then just start adjusting things a wee bit. There we are. I'm going to scale that down and make it tighter. I'm probably also going to insert an edge loop down the entire thing so I can pull it out. So shift, right click, insert edge loop tool. Let's get our tool open. Uh, relative is what we want. So let's do relative somewhere around. Actually, let's do this. I'm going to grab these elements here now and actually pull them back and out somewhere around those lines. Yeah. And sure, I might want some more stuff going on though, like in here. Uh, pull these out to get some more curvature going on. There we are. I'm liking it. It's okay. Vertex, grab you, pull you out as well. And do we need some height on that? You want to think? You want to do some height? Let's do some height. Let's see what it looks like. And then probably some sort of a bend. Because if we're looking at them like this, they're distinct features. So what I am going to do is we're just going to go a little crazy. Let's go to two, right click, vertex mode, and grab this entire back area right there. Make sure that's all we have. And I'm going to go up and over and in. And I'm even going to scale that up. The whole thing is one giant unit. That's probably the wrong place to scale. I want to keep that jaw location. So let's DV that to the center and then do the scale. There we are. And I'm going to push this back and in. I'm probably going to need to round these out so these features marry up a little bit better. But it's fine for the moment. And actually, I might end up uniting the face and eh, maybe not. I don't know yet. Let's keep working with it, though. I'm going to move that up and in. I'm even going to rotate this whole thing a bit. DV in the center. And I think, nope, DV to your center. 
and I'm going to rotate it ever so slightly and kind of push it down. Yeah, and then back in. I almost now want the back one to be larger than the front one, so I'm probably going to end up doing that and sticking the, ver the uh, pivot down there and just scaling that down a bit. And I almost feel like this needs to be rotated even more, so let's continue doing that and putting it in there. And I'm going to rotate this one up a little. All right, all right. Coming along a little. Uh, the face itself still is not reminiscent of a fox. Let's go to an actual fox. Uh, very narrow in the front. Uh, the nose probably a little bit smaller. So let's let's work with that. So here's our original pug nose. Let's let's change it up. We don't want it to look exactly like the other one because then people will notice and they'll think we're reusing assets, which we are. But, you know, you don't have time to make all kinds of assets, especially when you are this programmer and coder all in one. Let's see. So there you are. And that goes up there and around and back up there. So I'm going to grab all of you and just kind of push you in and scale you down a little bit. I'm going to hit two so I can see what I'm doing. And now I'm going to start manipulating some of these verts. Maybe push them in down. Uh, you know what? The fox seems like the whole nose is smaller on a fox. So what we are going to do is grab the base of this and push it up and thin it out. So I'm going to make sure I definitely have all of these elements down here. Do a couple selections. I'm going to hit W and then DV to the center. And let's go to, whoops, my rotate tool. I am going to just push this in and then maybe elongate, I don't want to elongate this, I want to elongate the bottom. So let's elongate these elements, push them down. I'm going to start just grabbing things. I want this to be sleeker, more narrow, like a fox. All right, somewhere in there. And then I think I'm also going to have the continuity of these elements become a little bit more pronounced. So let's grab all of these guys and sort of pull them on out like this. Yeah. Okay. And probably we're going to push in all of this back stuff. Right click face mode and grab you guys and just insert inwards a bit. This bit up here I'm not in love with. So let's go to one mode. Try to make some sense of this nonsense. So you and you, I could lose. So let's move you down a bit, especially the one inside. You're, and the you, oh, you are really messing things up. So we'll, let's pull all of you kind of out a bit. We'll have to see what this does to our actual mesh. Let's go with a pointedness to the nose. That means I'm gonna end up making this part of the nose even more pronounced, even though that's probably not fully correct. Uh, it's more what I want to go with. I do want this character to appear mean, so I'm going to push this down a little bit. I'm hoping that's going to help accentuate things. Now this whole nose, I really do feel like Foxy's face is really, really damn long. So we're probably just going to end up pulling everything out that we have here. Um, and then this deep indent is just wrong as well. So let's inflate and move up which might help us make this look a little bit more mean. I am going to thin this out though, this way, and then push it on up. And we're gonna just kinda figure this one out as we go along. So maybe down there, and then you, maybe somewhere in here, back. And I'm gonna want some curvature going on in here, I think. I'm gonna kinda push that one up Pull this one down. I think we need some edge loops, so let's go into insert edge loop and start messing with that. So I am going to once again just playing around, seeing what I like. So don't quote me on any of this stuff. This is just figuring it out. I want this is too rounded, too comical. I want this pushed in and this pushed in as well. The width comes from the back part of the face, not the front. So we'll take this now and that we can pull out and thicken up a bit probably. We'll need to manipulate this some more 
So let's go to two key, right click, insert edge loop tool, maybe somewhere back there. And then this bit, we can start trying to make work with everything else that's going on with Foxy here. So kind of out, and then maybe these guys kind of in. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe. Let's see, you can go away. we try grabbing the bottom elements and raising them up and then just sort of giving him some ups and downs to what's going on here and this bit <clears throat> excuse me might need to be modified to compensate for what's going on now with this top bit yeah let's let's play right here for a second I feel like I need another edge loop to give me, or I need to do an extrusion right there. So let's do that. Right click face. Just to give those bits an area where they kind of come together. And I do feel like I want to keep that thin, or at least thin on the exterior. I like the shape that's going on there, so I'm going to pull out thickness on those bits. And we'll go in here and start manipulating as well, quite a bit. Let's do the same over here, just to give it some thickness. It is a double-sided object, so uh, I do need to worry eventually about things like Z-fighting and the mesh intersecting itself. So, you know, think about that stuff. And I think I'm going to increase the number of ridges by another one, and then stick it right there. And this nose here, the back bit, we're going to push back in, I think. Okay. Almost like I want to be able to do a snarl with this character. Not that he does, or she does, I don't know, Foxy, whatever Foxy happens to be, doesn't matter. But uh, I want, I want that ability, I think. And then this one, let's grab these elements and push them in and maybe pull that one out. And you, you I'm not enjoying. So let's keep playing. I feel like you're too close for emotion. I need a little bit of separation between these two elements. Almost like this too needs to be sunk in to this cavity, this channel that's being created from this lower lip area. So let's actually do that. And scale that up a bit, fill in that spot. I might need to make a hard edge somewhere in here to really make this a little bit more pronounced. Let's see what happens if I do that. Save to right click, insert edge loop mode, and do something like that. Not in love with it, so we'll leave it for now, but it is a thought. Okay. Well, anyway, let's duplicate this guy. Uh, save W, make sure it's somewhere in line. DV, Control D, move this one up and scale it down. So ridge after ridge after ridge. And this one will have to be tweaked to work here. So we're going to rotate this, I think. Just free rotate it in camera space and then move it on in. Same thing with this guy right here, but I also want this to go down. We got all of you, right? Yes, okay. Yeah, I want you to be, got to form some sort of definition right here. So I want to make sure I tweak it. And let's push this in. And then we're going to grab this whole thing and actually pull that down. I'm going to do the same thing, I think, for most of these. Because when they come together, I do kind of want that snarly ridge. I might have to come back in and give another edge loop in there to make that work out a little bit better. But at least now it, it feels like a series of um, mean ridges. Right? I almost want to sink that in, this. Even though it's not needed, 
I just feel like that's probably more correct. Maybe you in a little. This big gap is needs to be filled with something. We might just end up filling it with himself. So we go to one key and we grab these two elements. That's going to have a huge impact on the underlying subdivisional surface. Yeah, right there. So if we want to, if I want to keep what's going on on the other side, we can do something like this. Leave that gap there, grab these elements, and pull this stuff out. Let's go two and just start doing this. Grab that. The chiming you hear is my wife's clock that she absolutely loves. I'm not a huge fan of it, but whatever. I almost wonder if we we play with this a bit. You're a problem and you are a problem. Why don't we just do an edge loop so I don't have problems? Okay, so if we, what was I doing? Something like this. See, this almost begs to leave enough space though to make this cavity open enough to emote. Right? Am I wrong? I don't know. You know what? Let's go with it for the moment. Oh, that tongue needs to be halved. Let's have the tongue. There we go. Okay, so that's something. We need internal bits to this thing. And actually, you know what? Before we do that, this fox ear. Let's address that. So camera space out, vertex mode, camera space out. Thicken this thing up a bit on the underside. Okay, and I'm probably gonna end up pushing in all of these elements to, to work with it. So if we go to edge mode now, and two key please, one key, you, 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 and you, all of you. We're going to come along for a little ride. We're going to go into the ear. Somewhere like that, maybe. And down. Apparently I screwed that up a bit. You are a vert I missed, so you're going to come back too. And let's see. Let's somewhere back there, maybe. And out. Three key. What do we got? So we got that indent, which I like. Uh, the bottom part of the ear should probably all go back, I'm guessing. Not that I know what foxes are like, just to me, I think that's probably how this should be going. And I almost want to bring all of these uh, elements down here, down and in as well. And then I guess push these ones back in. To kind of give it that sort of a contour. A bit in and a bit out. Then this roundedness, I'm not sure about that. Also, should we kind of point this up? Maybe in. Let's go with it. Okay. Oh, teeth. We need teeth, right? So let's take a look. Uh, so teeth here, the thing's just kind of fused with some teeth popping out and as we get further into it we can see teeth within teeth and then we have an entire element here meant to hold it together and then of course here is just hell bad stuff so foxy is a fox so let's do foxy teeth i am going to start hiding things to make my life a little bit easier so let's get rid of these internal elements 
And I'm going to keep that. And I guess we can keep the rest. And the tongue is going to go for the moment. Let's go file, save as. Let's make a new scene just to keep things from getting perverted. Let's call this mouth. Okay, this video has gone on for almost 30 minutes. So let's stop here. In the next video, I'm going to pick up dealing with the teeth. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like. If you didn't, dislike it. And if you want to see more content like this routinely, make sure you subscribe.